When it comes to making a first impression, there is no more important tool in a hero's arsenal than their costume. But in the world of My Hero Academia, a hero costume is much more than a fashion statement. It's almost like an extension of a hero's quirk, designed to let them get the most mileage out of their abilities. So what does that look like when it comes to Class 1A? In this video, we will be taking a look at every 1A student's hero costume and how it evolved over the course of the series. Number 1. Yuga Oyama Also known by his hero name Can't Stop Twinkling, Yuga Oyama is best known nowadays as a UA trader. Born quirkless, Oyama obtained his quirk, Naval Laser, from All for One, but the quirk does not suit his body, so his hero costume is designed to make up for that. Evidently trying to evoke a knight in shining armor persona, Oyama wears a suit of armor, a winged mask, and a purple cape, but the most important part of his costume is a belt which allows him to control the output of his quirk so it won't leak out. He has worn this belt since he was a very young child due to the incompatibility of his body and his quirk, and he hasn't made any major changes to the costume yet. And since we now know he has been acting as a mole for All for One all this time, I doubt hero costume upgrades are going to be on the radar anytime soon for him. Number 2. Mina Ashido the upbeat and sociable Mina Ashido, hero named Pinky, loves to stand out and both her quirk and hero costume reflect that. Impossible to miss in a teal and purple camel bodysuit, purple boots, and a furry jacket, Mina never upgrades her costume, but it sort of covers all the bases already, since both the suit and the boots are acid proof. She also has a winter variation on the same costume, which is identical except for the longer jacket. Though the costume is a little short on protection, it won't get corroded by her acid quirk, and it gives her the full range of motion that her combat style requires. Some might say it is an eyesore, but it does the trick. Number 3. Suyu Asui A lot of Class 1A members lean really hard into the hero themes when designing their costumes, but probably none more than Suyu Asui, also known as the rainy season hero, Fropi. Her green wetsuit, wet water shoes, and binocular-like headgear all point to her frog quirk and her accompanying aptitude in water. It is even capable of changing colors with her body when Suyu camouflages herself. She also has a winter costume that counteracts one of her quirk's major weaknesses, her difficulty to regulate her body temperature. By insulating her suit and adding temperature regulation devices, she increases the extent to which she is able to use her quirk when it would otherwise be too cold. Some of the more heavily thematic costumes kind of miss the mark in terms of accentuating a hero's quirk, but this one definitely does not. Number 4. Tatsuki Bakugo up next, we have the fan favorite character Bakugo, who goes by the hero name Great Explosion Murder God Dynamite. I have to say, I'm kind of surprised that he's never changed his hero costume, but no. Other than a winter version and a stealth costume he wears in one of the movies, he has always had the same one. Bakugo's normal hero costume consists of a black tank top with an orange X across the chest, a neck brace, grenade shaped gauntlets, a belt containing a couple of actual grenades, a mask shaped like an explosion, knee protectors, and combat boots. While a lot of the costume's design seems to focus on aesthetics, the reoccurring grenade motif actually serves a purpose. Both the gauntlets and hand grenades in his belt store his nitroglycerine sweat for detonation later. Though it's not much different from his normal costume, Bakugo also has a winter version with long sleeves instead of his usual tank top. Number 5. Toru Hagakure It's both incredibly easy and incredibly hard to design a hero costume when your quirk is invisibility. On the one hand, aesthetics don't matter if you can't see the costume. But on the other, how do you make invisible fabric? Invisible Girl has a very simple answer to that question. You don't. Probably to minimize the surface area that is visible on her body, Invisible Girl's costume is nothing but gloves and a pair of shoes. I don't know whether she has invisible clothes on or what, but I kind of hope she does, because if she didn't, well, that would have some pretty uncomfortable implications. In the winter, she wears a variation on the same costume with heavier gloves and boots. I have like a million questions about this hero costume, but hey, if it works, it works. Number 6. Tenya Ida Another character whose costume has a bit of a night theme going on, Class President Ida. His quirk, Engine, uses engines and his calves to give him superhuman speed, so Ida's costume is built for speed. He wears a suit of lightweight silver armor with a decorative wing-shaped muffler in the back, a helmet that cuts down on wind resistance, and boots that double as both a power boost and a cooling system for his legs. The armor's primary purpose is not protection, but efficiency, cutting down on wind resistance to help Ida run faster. I personally have a hard time seeing how carrying a cooling system on each leg would increase your speed at all, but Hero Tech is pretty advanced, so I'm willing to buy that they might be able to make something like that super lightweight in this world. And it must work because Ida has never made any notable changes to his costume, unless you count removing his engine mufflers to improve his quirk use before the joint training arc. Number 7. Hyoyuka Jiro the hearing hero, Earphone Jack, known to her classmates as Jiro, has a pretty simple approach to her costume design, with a lot more emphasis on function than form. 
Opting for a simple ensemble of a t-shirt, jacket, choker, and pants, Juro's first hero costume might easily be mistaken for civilian attire, if not for a pair of boots with the built-in stereo. Later, amplifier bracelets attached to a pair of headphones were made to allow her to more effectively use her quirk. While the headphones and amplifiers do allow her to greatly extend the range of her quirk, I personally think this costume is still a little lacking. And that is because it gives her pretty much no protection. Like, I'm pretty sure she's charging into battle in a regular old pair of black skinny jeans. Especially after the events of Chapter 355, which sees Jiro lose an ear and earphone jack to all for one, I question whether or not a costume with no protective capabilities whatsoever was the best design for her. Number 8. Denki Kaminari Much like his close friend Jiro, electricity quirk user Denki Kaminari, who goes by Charge Bolt, starts off with a very simple costume. Consisting of a white t-shirt, black pants, and a jacket with a lightning bolt design, the only part of Kaminari's original hero costume that looks like a costume is a single headphone and antenna. However, he gets a significant tech upgrade in the second version, which gives him what he calls sharpshooting gear, a wristband which lets him shoot projectiles that allow him to focus his quirk. These pointers function by drawing Kaminari's electricity to whatever they hit, allowing him to discharge energy with more precision. He also now has a visor that lets him track the placement of his pointers. All of this was meant to correct one of the biggest problems with Denki's quirk. It's hard to control where the electricity discharges actually go. One of the biggest leaps in Kaminari's quirk evolution was gaining the ability to discharge electricity without massive collateral. And these design changes were a big part of why he was able to do that. The costume also gets a couple of aesthetic upgrades, with slight changes to the design of his pants and jacket, and the additions of a belt and a choker. Though these changes probably had less to do with his quirk. Number 9. Eijiro Kirishima Fittingly for a student who goes by the name of sturdy hero Red Riot, Kirishima's hero costume isn't really meant to protect him. That's his hardening quirk's job. I still can't say that I fully understand why he likes to do battle with villains shirtless, but when your quirk can make you near invulnerable to injury, I guess it's a risk you can afford to take. Aside from his notable lack of a shirt, Kirishima wears headgear whose purpose is unclear. A cape around his waist with an arc clasp that likely references his hero name and red shoulder pads. It's really not clear how, if at all, any of this helps him use his quirk more effectively, but his is a hard quirk to assist with support items, so I'll give them a pass on that. Kirishima later gets a small update in the addition of sleeves to his costume, which are meant to protect people from his quirk during rescues. I think it's pretty interesting that the evolution of Kirishima's costume has little to do with supporting his quirk, instead focusing on the safety and maybe even comfort of civilians. And I feel like that says a whole lot about Kirishima's priorities as a hero and as a person. Number 10. Koji Koda Koda, or the petting hero Anima, whose quirk allows him to talk to animals, is another hero trainee I imagine would be hard to make a hero costume for. How do you design gear that makes someone better at literally communicating with nature? I have no idea. And I'm not really sure if the in-world designers who made his costume did either, because at first, all he wears is a yellow bodysuit and matching shoes. He did get an upgrade though, and when we see him take the provisional license exam, he is wearing a new pair of straps around his shoulders, different shoes, and a mask that lets people hear his voice when he is using his quirk. It's hard to say, especially since Koji has probably the least screen time of any Class 1A student, but I would guess that that is a quirk-related upgrade somehow. Number 11. Izuku Midoriya As both the protagonist and student whose quirk has evolved the most over the course of the series, it makes sense that Deku would have the most costume changes. When Deku starts out, his costume is homemade and a gift from his mother, consisting of a jumpsuit, mask, knee and elbow pads, belt, gloves, and a hood made of a ski mask. All of these parts were purchased in ordinary civilian stores, so it is very different from a professionally made hero costume and very reflective of Deku's humble beginnings. However, he soon acquires a costume that is built to withstand his powerful quirk, so he upgrades to a sturdier green bodysuit with protective leg braces, a utility belt, a mask, and gauntlets. That wasn't the last of his upgrades though. When Deku transitioned to a fighting style that used his legs more than his previous one had, he added iron soles to his boots as well as arm braces and better knee pads. He also received support gloves from Mei Hatsume for long range attacks which complete his hero gamma design. Though costume gamma retains much of the aesthetic of his original costumes, its differences from the original are symbolically important as it is representative of Deku finally realizing that he can be his own kind of hero instead of imitating All Might. Previously his fighting style was punching based since that was what All Might did. But after realizing that he can much more effectively use his legs, Deku develops his shoot style and the corresponding costume which is a huge step towards coming into his own as a hero. Following the war arc, he adds Gran Torino's cape, a mask, and gauntlets for support, and after his return to UA, he now sports a rebuilt costume gamma. Number 12. Minoru Mineta Let me just start this one by saying that if you thought that Mineta's hero costume was supposed to look like a diaper when you first saw it, then that makes two of us. 
Seriously, I know it's not really about aesthetics, but I can't unsee it. Which you might argue is a weird kink for a weird character. However, I have since been informed that it is a bowl. As in, Grape Rush is a bowl of grapes. Clever if you're inclined to believe it. Unfortunate associations aside though, Mineta's costume is quite basic. A purple bodysuit and mask, yellow boots and cape, and of course, the bowl-shaped shorts. This is another costume that seems to be more about portraying the student's hero persona, in this case, the grape theme, than about enhancing the use of his quirk. Even as his quirk skills improve, the only change Mineta ever makes to his costume is adding a stem to his mohawk to make his head look even more like a bunch of grapes. Not sure how practical it is, but at least you can't fault the guy for failing to stay on theme. Number 13. Mashirao Ojiro More than once, Ojiro, or Tailboy, is referred to as ordinary, so it makes sense that he would have a pretty plain costume. Since his combat style relies primarily on martial arts using his tail quirk, he wears a typical karate uniform, and that's it. In the winter though, he does add a furry overcoat for warmth. I know I harp a lot on costumes that don't provide any protection, but in this case, I think it works. It's harder to design a quirk enhancing costume when your quirk is part of your body, so wearing something designed for martial arts is pretty much the only way Ojiro's costume can capitalize on his skills. Number 14. Rikido Sato The sweet's hero Sugar Man, or Sato, is another hero whose quirk is sort of hard to design for, which is probably why we have never seen his costume change from its base form. Sato's basic costume is a yellow bodysuit that covers everything but his mouth and eyes. His quirk, Sugar Rush, gives him a power-up when he eats sugar, so he carries small amounts of sugar in his belt in case he burns through whatever sugar he ate before a fight. It's not a very elaborate costume, but honestly, it serves its purpose. And that's probably why he has never changed it. Number 15. Meso Shoji It's always interesting to look at hero costumes for heteromorphic quirks, because unlike an emitter quirk user's costume, they really can't be used to enhance a hero's quirk use at all. Shoji, or Tentacle, has one such quirk, Dupli Arms. And his costume, yet another side character costume that hasn't changed as far as we know, seems to be trying to increase his range of motion. Since his quirk relies on the use of his arms, Shoji's costume doesn't cover them, so he wears a blue bodysuit with what looks like an eye design on the torso and belt, a face mask, and boots. I think the eye motif is supposed to resemble the eyes he can create at the end of his tentacle arms, but I'm not totally sure. It's pretty straightforward. Since all he can do for quirk purposes with a costume is leave his arms bare, I think he was just going for a recognizable design. Number 16. Hanta Sero Human tape dispenser Sero, also known by his hero name Cellophane, leans into the theme of his quirk pretty heavily. With shoulder pads and a helmet that look like tape dispensers, it wouldn't be that hard to guess what his quirk was, which is a plus. It's always good to stay on brand and recognizable. Aside from those, he wears a black and white bodysuit, a metal belt, and boots. So while his costume doesn't really help him use his quirk, it definitely looks the part and offers what I would think would be pretty decent protection. All in all, I can see why Sero never upgraded his costume. Number 17. Shoto Todoroki Now, I have to hand it to Shoto for what has to be the best costume glow up in the entire series. When he starts out, he's not making much of a fashion statement in what looks like a white formal suit with his right side covered in ice. It's about as image conscious as you'd expect from someone whose hero name, Shoto, is literally just his legal name. I get that it's probably somewhat out of spite towards his fire quirk using father as the ice side of his costume is the fire side of his quirk, but it's still not very practical, or really very stylish. So when Shoto upgrades to a much more sensible costume at the sports festival, it is a welcome change. Since Shoto's new costume, which is a much more basic blue bodysuit with a vest and belt, is designed to make use of both his fire and ice quirks, it's got gear to help regulate his body temperature. There are devices in his jacket and vest that can warm him up or cool him off. His boots are spiked so he won't slip on his own ice, and his utility belt contains useful rescue supplies. It isn't flashy, but it gets the job done. It is also very reflective of his changing outlook, since his first costume was designed only to use his ice quirk. It is a fitting symbol of his growth, when Todoroki's biggest barriers to improvement have always been more psychological than physical. Later on, we learn that Shoto has made a few more hero upgrades to better withstand his growing firepower. His jacket is more heat resistant, he's added gauntlets to help him store up his quirk, and his utility belt has a greater storage capacity. So while his changing attitude necessitated the first upgrade he got, the second was a result of his increasing skill with his quirk, and the need not to burn his costume to a crisp. Number 18. Fumikage Tokoyami How do you put a costume on an intangible entity? Tokoyami's Dark Shadow quirk begs that question, but also offers an answer. You don't. Dark Shadow is probably the hardest quirk in the series to enhance with a costume, so it seems like Jet Black Hero Sukuyomi is going for utility instead, with a plain all-black hero costume and a long black cloak. I can't really say that this costume helps him use his quirk, or would have evolved with it, but aesthetically, it's very Tokoyami. Number 19. Ochako Uraraka 
Uraraka, also known as Rabbity, has a costume fine-tuned for her gravity quirk. In addition to a black and pink bodysuit, she wears a helmet that alleviates inner ear stress for better orientation, wristlets that help her stabilize her blood pressure and prevent nausea, a neck brace to prevent headaches, and large pink boots to cushion her landings. Since most of this gear is supposed to combat the many disadvantages of operating in zero gravity, her original costume's major weakness was a lack of combat utility, so she later gets an upgrade to correct that problem. She can now shoot grappling hooks from her armbands, and the glass visor, which could have been seriously problematic if it broke in battle, is gone. One of Ochaku's biggest goals has been to improve her combat skills, as well as her quirk, as we see when she chooses to do her work study with Gunhead to learn martial arts. So it makes sense that not only her quirk evolution, but her expanding skill set would influence the change in design of her costume. Number 20. Momo Yayoruzu I find it a little ironic that within the fandom, everything Hero Create is best known for wearing almost nothing. Momo's costume, which is designed to maximize the use of her creation quirk, is easily the most controversial in Class 1A. But whether you think that Momo's costume makes total sense for her quirk, or that it is way too provocative for a high schooler, pretty much everyone has an opinion on it, so it's likely you're asking, why is it designed like this? Well, Horikoshi has given his reason for the choice, whether you believe they're legit or not. Since Momo's quirk uses her body fat to create objects, her leotard is open at the front to give her access to her body's major fat stores. That would be the stated reason for the lack of coverage it provides. Horikoshi is also a self-professed pervert, so that may be a consideration as well. But anyways, Momo also wears a thick belt, which holds her Yaoyori Dictionary, a book containing the information she needs to recall the chemical formulas of anything she wants to make. This design hasn't changed throughout the series, though in the winter, she does add a long cape over her leotard for warmth. We know why this design looks like it does from a quirk standpoint, but is it really well designed? Well, at least in canon, I'd argue that it could use some work. From the cumbersome belt and the encyclopedia she carries around everywhere, to the risk of wardrobe malfunctions in such a minimal costume, which she has had by the way. Suffice to say, this is one of the costumes I am interested to see any future changes to for sure. But that is a wrap on Class 1A's hero costumes. What do you think? We'd love to hear your hottest hero costume takes in the comments. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku, thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day! I love you!